Good morning, lovely people. How are you all doing today? I feel like I need to keep my voice down. It's so quiet. Um, I've come to do some shopping in the garden because when we get home, we're going to do some cooking. So come on, let's go and do our shopping. I'll take you there. We are definitely at the tail end of autumn now. It's about the middle of November. The whole site still and quiet. There was quite a lot of fog this morning, but it's lifted. Good, so I can see what I'm doing. But yeah, it's literally in the last few days. Oh, <laughs> that was... That was our little fire on bonfire night. Just kept it to this little small area now because this used to, oh, plow me granny trolley, sorry, it's going flying. We used to end up with just, from where that table is, that's new as well. All of this used to be piled up and then just a massive fire here, but instead, oh, someone's gonna start building next door. Can you just make out where those two posts are? They're protecting a little sapling. And we've got another sapling here and another one here. Yay, we're planting trees. So for future bonfires, it's just gonna be this, just a little fire pit and a nice area to sit to um, enjoy a chat in the summer or if it's bonfire night to sit and have a mug of mulled cider or something anyway i digress um i haven't been here for quite a few days as you can imagine but yeah the the weather the temperature by the way i just thought i'd do <laughs> this little walk with you because then you can see where i come shopping <laughs> yeah the weather has really quite suddenly changed in the space of a week we went from the high teens in Celsius, which is way above average. And we've dropped now to a sort of more normal, sort of, I think it's about 11 degrees today. And looking at the forecast, oh, it's all dying back. This is one of Gary's plots. He's got the other plot next to it. The reason he has two plots before anyone asks is because he's one of our founding fathers, as it were. Um, there were just a handful of them that rescued this entire site. Of, of those original rescuers, I think there's about four of them left and they all have two plots and no complaints from anyone because without them and their work, we wouldn't have anywhere. And that's his second plot. Oh, look at that Cavallo Nero. That's the Cavallo behind his lavender. That obviously I've had. Yeah, but, um, oh, this one's gonna start building work. It suddenly, definitely feels like we're heading into winter. And one of the forecasts I saw in the last couple of days, I think we're about one week away from having a three degrees centigrade night. So not quite freezing. But almost. Okay, nearly there. <laughs> there's always, there's always a builder somewhere. I think someone must have heard my voice as I came in because... Good morning, Miss Rosie. Oh, hello. Hey. Mm. She thinks, who are you, stranger? I haven't been here for over a week. <laughs> Okay, we'll have some proper cuddles in a minute, but I'm here to do my shopping, Rosie. I need to concentrate. <laughs> Don't let me forget. Oh, yes, here we are. Shay, Vivi. <clears throat> the winter larder. Excuse me one moment. And numero duo of the welcoming committee. Morning, Rusty. Mm, yes, oh yes, let's have scudgies. Right, I tell you what, you two. <laughs> Rusty, get out of... You're on my path. Get out of my way. <laughs> Come on. So the first port of call is going to be at the shed because... Oh, my goodness. 
the girls next door they've done all their weeding emptying of beds they'll be getting ready to cover their beds soon yes oh such a happy sight i mean who wouldn't love coming to a supermarket that looks like this <laughs> a bit bare but i know where the goodies are okay okay lead on rusty lead on So you can see, in terms of a shopping experience, it's rather lovely, isn't it? Oh, what's that on my table? It looks like someone has gifted me a pot of some description. That's rather lovely, isn't it? Actually, that's a great pot for... Um, for standing a planting, isn't it, as a, as a drip tray? Yes, do you agree, Rosie? Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna put you down because I need to get the shed open, have some cuddles, and then we can do the shopping. So before I even think about going shopping, I need to change my footwear to something more suitable. <laughs> need to get my wellies on. Oh, Rusty's making funny little chirrupy noises in the background. <clears throat> I'm going to do all sorts of bits and bobs of picks today. Um, oh, <coughs> can't get my boot on. For all sorts of meals. By the one I'm going to show you, I'm going to cook with you later. We're going to do beet burgers. <clears throat> so... I'm going to grab, I just sat on the floor, oh, that one's trying to grow roots, a couple of onions, they can go in there. I'm just, I have my snips in there, I'm wondering if I need my snips. Hmm, got to think about what I'm having. Right, a couple of onions, one, one garlic will suffice, no, oh, let's have two. Just thinking at the moment, because the weather's being so inclement, and I know we've got a load more rain days coming, if I decide to have a big cook-a-thon at home, <laughs> those, this, I'm going to bring this one home today. Oh. <laughs> this is one of the Muscat Provence. I've got all but, I've got two of these. I've got the Long Island cheese, which is also big, and one big butternut left to get home. I'm now just thinking because I mentioned that in about a week's time we've got that three degree night. So I want to get these home and away from any possible frost. So that can come home with me today. Now, one of the things I want to shop for today, I need my garden fork. <laughs> it's underneath Rusty. He's having a few little nibbles and purrs. So I'm going to leave him to that. Let's go and, let's go and pick other stuff um let's go and you know what i need to focus on is picking the beets because that's going to be the star of this afternoon's cooking session come on I'm after about a cricket ball sized one but I think those two combined that gives me a cricket ball okay let's get some leaves oh this is why I'll be glad oh, 
when I can get the nets off. It just makes life easier <laughs> for doing my shopping when there's no nets. Oh, lovely Cavallo Nero. I mean, it went in so late, but um, yeah, there's definitely, I'm trying to get my gloves off for a bit more dexterity. There's definitely a few pickings here. just a leaf or two um, from each plant and uh, yeah, gorgeous that's enough for mm, two three meals that'll do for now so yeah a couple of leaves from each plant and the plants just keep coming and coming and coming. They'll come all through the winter. I, I like my stuff as, as fresh as possible. So I'll generally pick for anywhere between two and four days at a time. Depends how often I'm down here. But yeah, that'll do me for two or three days at least. If I want some more after that, I'll just come back and get some more. And I think... Oh, blah. When you've got a dry day and you're going to think about making it a priority to oh, I need my gloves back on, yeah, to see to these beds, get my nets off, just because, you know, anything to make life easier in terms of harvesting, the, what you don't want to do to yourself, <laughs> this is note to myself, is you don't want to make it such a fat that you think, oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> you know, can't be bothered syndrome. So yeah, the sooner I get this, actually this was mulched, but get more on it. Nets off, weeded, more mulch. Life easier during the winter. Right, what's next? Oh yeah. Let's see if Rusty's out of the shed now so I can get on. Oh my goodness, my soil, when it gets wet, it's so sticky, 
but there's treasure down there that's worth getting. Well, that's a very happy sight and a very happy pick. <coughs> oh, those lovely greens. Beautiful, aren't they? A couple of lovely beets, a couple of onions, a couple of garlic. That's a couple of the spud plants. This is new potatoes still. I think I've got three more plants to go, but I think I might get them out in the next week or so because we're getting so wet, I think they might, there's a risk they'll rot. And I'm going to take that one home with me today as well. I'm not going to cook that this week, not just yet. But, I know it doesn't look much, but there's about three days of eating in here with other stuff I've got at home. This, it's like when I sort of do my shopping videos, I always say, you know, my shopping supplements what's in the garden. And at the moment, this fresh stuff supplements the stuff that I've stored and preserved already. So, yay! Right, I'm going to stay and pick a few more bits and bobs for other meals. But I just stopped to show you this because this is for our beet burger recipe meal. I will see you back at the kitchen shortly. Oh, home! Thank goodness. It's not that cold but i just feel really chilly i think it's the the damp that's got into things so i'm going to be really happy when i start turning the gas burners on and warm up a bit just to say very quickly i don't know maybe things are sounding a bit echoey in the kitchen at the moment that's because half the kitchen is in the living room i've had the mouse man back i've yet to put all the furniture back in the kitchen so apologies if we sound a bit echoey also, just to say, before I take another layer off, on my way home from the garden, I noticed that quite a lot of the, uh, the vegetable shops, markets, whatever, they, uh, most of them put their, they've got their veg displayed on the street, so you can see and get tempted as you go home. I noticed that loads of them have got beetroots in stock right now, big lovely bunches of beetroots. So hopefully, because there's loads around, they're in season, hopefully they're not too expensive. If you have a go at this recipe and you like it, I'll show you next year how you can grow your own if you haven't grown them before. I think they're dead easy to grow. Some people have issues. We'll come to that next year. Yay! <laughs> Planting a little bit next year. So uh, let's crack on. Oh, I should also say this recipe is from Jack Munro, a girl called Jack, girl after my own heart. I can't remember which cookbook it's from, Cooking on a Bootstrap, possibly. Um, there's a couple of adjustments in my recipe just because of ingredients that I don't have, I don't generally keep at home, notably vinegar. It's one of those things though, give it a go, you can tweak it, do what you want with it, the base is the same and it could not be easier. So let's crack into the ingredients to start with. Very few ingredients, like I said, it could not be more simple. So the stars of the show, beetroot. Uh, you want about a cricket ball sized, so I've kind of picked two. There's a couple of little holes in them, so I don't know whether something is living in there. We'll fish it out. Um, we're going to use the whole beetroot, so they're literally just washed and I've just chopped the roots off. Equal-ish size. I've got one onion. It doesn't have to be equal size. Do what you want. Tin of red kidney beans. Now, I haven't used these before. These are the really cheap ones at Lidl. I think they were 33 or 35p, but you can actually use any beans in this recipe. You want a kind of a tin's worth. If you've grown your own beans, so it's 400 grams it says on the tin. Yeah, a tin's worth of any kind of beans, but I've got the kidney beans, so I'll use them. Some spices, I've got cumin, turmeric and paprika. Again, whatever spices you fancy, but they do. it does, it does need a little kick of some spices. I've got a little bit of flour and olive oil. Uh, just in terms of kit, I've got ready over here, I've got my grater and plate. I've got, just at a shop, let's bring it in the shop, I've got a baking tray. Uh, and right in the background, I don't know if you can see, you can't look, it's behind the oil. I've got my food processor. Now you don't need a food processor for this. 
but there's one bit of it in terms of mashing the kidney beans down I just find it easier in the food processor than using a masher it's ever since I broke both my wrists I find mashing beans a little bit tricky uh, so I just whack them in the food presser, processor right so in terms of cost what have I well 33p for the beans I mean it's pennies in terms of the amount of flour and spices used I, this is enough for four patties four burgers so oh at most including all the other bits let's say it's 40p so it's 10p per burger but of course I've got free beetroot and free onion let's get on and do it first things first finally oh not finally finally chop an onion i just realized i didn't get the oil on bit of a glug of oil heavy bottomed pan can't go wrong with a heavy bottomed pan yeah, so finely chopped because after whoopla, after this chopping going everywhere, they're not going to have any more processing done. Let's get those whacked in. I'll just get this chopping and grating done and then I'll give you a closer look. Now, ceramic plate and grater and rubber gloves because I'm about to tackle the beetroot. I can't remember what I was making once. I think it was probably borscht and I didn't put my rubber gloves on. Actually, there's a little bit more root that can come off of that. Let's just have that off. Yeah, my hands got really, really stained. <laughs> And then I was into work the next day. <laughs> so working with children with red hands. <laughs> it's like, hmm, how to explain that? So the skin is left on. They've literally just been scrubbed. And then we're going to grate them. And the reason I'm doing it on the ceramic plate is to save my chopping board <laughs> from turning purple. Also, by grating them, it helps them to cook more quickly. I'm sending it all flying. Okay, well, that's going to take me a couple of minutes, so why don't I get it all grated and then come back to you when we add it. Fab, that's all the beetroot grated. Oh, I mean, oh, look at the gorgeous... Why would you not want to eat that? Beetroots are fantastic foods, um, uh, veggies. They have anti-inflammatory qualities, anti-cancer qualities. They're, they help to protect us from heart disease. They are an absolutely wonderful vegetable. They help to lower blood pressure. <laughs> Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Look at the colour of that plate. Oh, that's why I do it on a plate and not my chopping board. So, very simply, I'm going to sort of just very lightly, I was going to say simmer. Simmer's not the right word. I haven't got my words today, but just sizzle that off. There we go. We'll use that word instead. Sizzle off for 10 minutes or so. Get them cooked down a bit. Get the onion cooked down, but oh my goodness, gorgeous colour. Now, while that's doing, so this this is the point at which you could go one of two ways. If you feel like you've got the strength in your hands to mash the beans, you can do that in about 10 minutes when adding the beans to the mix, mash them in the pan. I found that really almost impossible. I'm just going to tip this pan up to you so you can get the best of the colour. Can I? Oh, I need studio lighting in my kitchen. Um, yeah, I found that really, really tricky. So instead, in the meantime, 
going to whiz them up in the food processor. I've given the beans a really thorough rinse, even though they came in water. You would especially want to do that if they were in brine. Now, of course, if you were using your own beans straight from the garden, you'd want to cook them first. You know, a ten, if they're really fresh, it's sort of a 10 minute steam or so. Oh, this, I've got to say, this food processor is a bit temperamental. Give them a few blitzes. Sorry, you couldn't hear that, couldn't you? Give them a few blitzes. Because what you want is you want to break them down, mash them down, but you don't want a puree as such. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to go back in there, which it doesn't like. Just for safety, turn it off. Are they still a bit chunky? Actually, you know what? There's a couple in there that are fairly chunky, but to be honest, I'm happy with that. I'll show you the consistency. So it, they are mashed. They're, they're kind of mashed rather than pureed. Now I can set that aside for a second because the beetroot and onions are still sauteing. That's the word I wanted, wasn't it? You want to do this for about 10 minutes or so. So I will bring you back when they've had enough time. I kind of, I sort of wanted to do this in almost real time to just show you how utterly quick and easy it is. And this is going to be such a great snack coming back from the allotment because I am a bit hungry. As I said, I'm making enough for four. So what I will do is I'm going to have two with you all now put two aside for this evening and then this evening I'm going to have them as a proper meal with where are you come back up here hang on a tick there you are yeah I'm going to have two this evening with some of the new potatoes some of the cavolo nero and what I made last night which is a sort of a tomato sauce reduction uh, that's also got in it even more beans so it's a sort of almost like my own version of baked beans these are fairly moist they don't really need that extra but um, the other way I've had them is very simply as an on the hoof snack between a couple of slices of bread a bit of lettuce a squirt of tomato ketchup that that vinegary bit brilliant boom as a sandwich scarf it Brilliant, an absolutely fantastic, really filling but nutritious snack. So let's come back when we're ready for the next bit. Lovely, these have had about 10 minutes. I'm not sure that you can see, but it has sort of all started reducing a little bit. So it's time for me to add the lovely sort of partly mashed up beans. Like I say, they're mashed rather than pureed because we still want a little bit of texture, a bit of bite to them. And this is now the time to add our spices. So a bit of cumin, but again with the spices, you know, go with your own preferences, your own tastes. This is a half teaspoon, but I'm going to, ooh, heaped. <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. Excuse me, turmeric, great. Turmeric, it's another one of those sort of anti-inflammatory. Let's give a good half heaped, so it's more like a teaspoon. I've been using turmeric for ages, have turmeric, excuse me, bang, bang. Use turmeric in my drink in the morning. I've got to say, in all honesty, I haven't noticed a difference in my poor old bones. This is some paprika. Mm, let's do a bit more paprika. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And then, yeah, just get it all combined. 
let those spices start coming to life again in the oil and the warmth yum 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 so get it well combined we want a nice <laughs> distribution of our spices all the time it's warming through and oh my goodness the smell is redonkulous go on get in there and can you see how it's starting to i don't know if you can see that. let me do it like that it's it's starting to come together lovely so now i'm just going to take the heat off And add, where have I put it? Oh, it's behind you. <laughs> so a heaped tablespoon of flour. This is just going to help it all come together. Now get that well combined. might need to do a bit of a turn and scrudge <laughs> oh that's really stiffening up now that's great because that's what I'm after I want it to get stiff now the next stage I want to form my patties but it's still really hot so what I'll actually do is I'm just going to leave it for about five or ten minutes or so to cool down and while it's cooling down a little bit I'm going to prepare my baking sheet I've got a baking sheet and with that I'm just going to grease the surface of it because we're going to make the patties put them onto the greased baking sheet and then pop them in the freezer for 10 minutes now actually I'll tell you this and now so I don't have to then we don't have to all oh, see me actually doing it sorry about the lighting today so yeah I'm going to just baking sheet oh that's my pastry brush that I used to um to grease it that'll have to be washed first so I'm going to just lightly grease it the amount that's in the pan once it's cooled a bit I'm going to sort of squash it into the bottom of the pan and divide it into four by eye bit of flour on my hands form the patties squishy squish squish and pop them onto the baking sheet then that goes into one of the freezers for about 10 minutes or so or into the fridge for half an hour to an hour. The reason you want to do that is it just helps them hold their shape when we come to cook them off in a minute. So rather than showing you all that, because I'm sure you all know how to do that kind of thing, I'll just get on and do it and we'll reconvene when it's time to cook them. So in actual fact, in my real time, that's going to be in about 15 minutes so in the intervening 15 minutes I can wash up all the mess and the clutter I've made in the kitchen get myself a plate ready this is a snack right now because I'm really hungry I started to warm up though it's nice when it comes to tonight when I do them for my supper in that intervening sort of 10 minutes while they're in the freezer I can get all my other lovely veggies and sauces and stuff prepped ready ready to go on ready to go on the boil or however i'm doing them uh just looking around yeah and and then at the last minute get my patties there'll be two spare patties i'll just keep them in the fridge i should have said as well sorry you can keep you can freeze these at this stage once we've made our patties they can go in the freezer just lay them up between sheets of greaseproof paper i've still managed to dye my hands lay them up with greaseproof paper in the freezer great or they'll stay perfectly well in the fridge for sort of three or four days but i'm warning you now they're not going to last three or four days because they're really yummy okay we'll come back when we're at the cooking stage Ooh, how good do these look well i don't know <laughs> they look good to me they might not to you that doesn't matter it's not you that's going to eat them so um, they're going to have about five minutes on each side which these two have had the uh, baking tray that I greased and put all four patties on I've just the remaining two I've just popped it in the fridge that's for 
dinner for tonight but I was thinking you know it's kind of it's a really quick and easy thing to make but it does make quite a lot of mess especially if you use your food processor for the bean mashing so perhaps double up the quantities and make a batch um, to freeze but I think let me just see oh, 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 how is it looking on the other side mm -hmm. I think it's time to get my face stuck into these Oh my goodness, I can't tell you how giddy, giddy I am to scoff. The light's not picking up and doing them justice. Let me do that, can you see? Oh, <laughs> hang on. Oops. <laughs> I was just trying to show you what a gorgeous color they are. Um, really, really yummy. Oh, I'm gonna have to fuff. Mmm. -hmm. The spices are lovely. It's quite subtle. I think you could do, oh, I didn't put any salt in, did I? Some of you are gonna say, there's no salt. Put your own salt in. Um, you know what, just have a go, because I think especially if you're growing your own beans, onions, and beets, beetroots, it's so cheap. Mm. I was really hungry. Um, it's it's so cheap. It's worth experimenting. See what sort of um, spices you like. You might like it much much hotter. Um, Jack puts vinegar in hers. A dash of vinegar. I don't have any, so I haven't put it in there. But you might like that too. <laughs> What's lovely, as you can tell, is there's a nice bit of chew on them. Uh, if you cook them off, fry them off like that, and you might have one left over. Mm -hmm. Have it tomorrow cold. They work perfectly well cold. And actually, they're, they're, they're pretty filling. So, I mean, I, I'm going to have these two now. This is my, it's sort of like a really late lunch for me. But for tonight, when I have... Uh, my lovely kale and my new potatoes and that kind of homemade baked bean type thing. I'll probably only cook one of these tonight. That will be plenty. And then the other one I can have tomorrow for a lunch either in a sarni with lettuce and tomato ketchup again or some other way. But yeah, please give it a go. It's so easy, so nutritious, so good for us. Packs, packs of protein punch for any veggies out there. They're beautiful in terms of their colour. I wish I could show you <laughs> without throwing them off the plate down the camera. But yeah, give them a go. Dead easy and dead lovely. Right, I better start planning next year's garden, hadn't I? This garden that is supposed to be really, really, really low maintenance. But the great thing about growing beetroot is it is really low maintenance. So it is one vegetable I can tackle next year without worrying about any faff and going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards and all that legwork that's killing me. So I'll definitely be doing some beetroot next year, maybe some extra. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen and in the garden this morning. Sorry, this I know this turned into a really long video, but I hope it's just a really pleasant, pleasurable video to come shopping in the garden with me, come home, cook with me, just hang out making <laughs> <laughs> really, frankly, gorgeous food. Mmm. 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 But until then, please look after yourselves. Be lovely to other people. Cheerio.